right. Hey, everybody, Tabitha Thomas here with you again today with Digital Agency Insiders Podcast. And today I've got a very special guest with us, and that's Liana Ling with Power Up Strategy. This is the Digital Agency Insiders Podcast. Inside, you'll learn how to build, grow, and scale your digital marketing agency all from the comfort of your favorite coffee shop. Let's get started with the show. to her. Liana is a former attorney turned traffic pro. She has been a member of the ad skills community for more than two years and has gone from marketing tricks, campaigns to scaling across networks for her clients. She's helped her info products, product clients deliver their traffic sources off just Facebook info uh, into other networks like YouTube, Pinterest, and Google. Liana, I'm so excited to have you with us. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. So I love digging into people's backgrounds. So I love the fact that you were a lawyer and turned into a digital marketer. So how did that even happen? Because I assume that most people, you know, you spend all these years going to school for uh, a career that you think you're going to be in forever. And then all of a sudden you decide, okay, well, that's not what I want to do. Let's change gears here. So how did, how did that happen for you? Sure. Well, actually, and I have to tell you that I spent many years not telling this story because it took me a while to kind of just get my head around what happened to me. But yes, I did train to be a lawyer and I practiced law for about 10 years. And um, in the later half of my legal career, I was actually working inside one of the big banks here in Canada and I ended up getting restructured. So that just really threw me for a loop. And what I really realized through that whole process was I don't really like doing this. You know? I mean, <laughs> you, you kind of train and you're kind of brought up through there. And, and I started to learn more and dive very deeply into what actually it means to be an entrepreneur. Because I realized that I was actually a frustrated entrepreneur underneath all of that, which is why it took me several years before I finally admitted that I'm not a good employee. So being an agency owner and an entrepreneur, really, it actually is more of a calling. I mean, it is what I, what I am and I haven't looked back since then. So I'm curious, was it like little bitty things as the years went on, like it just built up and built up or was it one day like, um, no, this restructure is enough to make me mad. I want to be in control. I'm done. I mean, was it a big process yeah. or a day? <laughs> No, it, it was actually pretty quick. So, you know, if anybody's kind of gone through a big change in their life, you kind of have a bit of a shock. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it actually came about through networking, which is a big role in terms of how I've actually built my whole business over the years. And a friend of mine said, hey, like, I think I have the right thing for you. And he actually is a matchmaker for franchises. So oh, I wow. started my entrepreneur life actually buying a digital marketing franchise. And that was sort of like a way to bridge the gap because when you have a franchise, you're still part of a bigger group. Mm -hmm. You feel the support of everybody. This is before I met you and Ben and everybody yeah. else. I wish I knew you guys way back then. I'm just saying. So <laughs> hey, there's um, a path for a reason. There's a, there's a reason for everything we go through. Exactly. So it gave me a structure and a way to kind of get in and start to dive into it. And again, through networking, I met a wonderful woman named Carissa Reiniger, who actually was one of the first, uh, I think she was like under 30 to reach a million in her business in Canada. And wow. I just started to, I had a deep dive into this entrepreneur world. And for me, coming from a background of like a lot of research, I was a litigation lawyer. Um, I just dove in head first. I wanted to learn everything about marketing and running a business business and being an entrepreneur and sales, everything along that. Yeah. So I really did go in, you know, feet first, <laughs> just, just dove right in and just started, started. And I think within the first couple, within the first month that I started my business, I already closed two clients, um, wow. again, through networking for there. And I was kind of like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, but that's how it started. Yeah. So what were you offering those two clients? What was your service that you went out there and sold the first time? Sure. Well, when I started my agency, um, the first thing I wanted to do was I knew I really wanted to help small businesses. And because it was in digital marketing, there was a lot of things that we could um, try. But back then, what was sort of the thing that got your foot in the door was creating websites. Mm -hmm. So I started with website redesign and SEO and Google ads. So kind of like all that together in let's order to try and help small, small businesses. Let's jump in the big. <laughs> the big that's comment. right. Yeah. Well, that's what happened again as, <laughs> and I, I talk a lot about failures. And one of the things that I did that I don't recommend you do when you first start out is you just take business from anybody who breathes and who has a wallet, right? Yes. So they were like, hey, do you do this? I said, sure, let's do it. So, so had you ever I designed on. a website before or developed? No. 
no, oh no. Gosh. I I had done other things like build databases and stuff like that. And I had, you know, I mean, I have a bit of a design background, oh, but uh, I had not, no, done this at all. <laughs> so, um, you know, and so I had, I had people that I hired and I brought in, so it was a lot of contractors at the time. And, but jumping in, you know, I, I picked up some pretty big projects in the beginning and I definitely learned a lot through a, a ten of failure and kind of just struggling through those clients in the first couple of months of, of, yeah, of my business. But it really all started with networking and just telling the people around me, Hey, I made a change. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, if you know somebody who needs this, let me know. And because I had always cultivated relationships before mm -hmm. it just, it, 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 you know, it just started to grow organically for me before I started running ads and creating an actual funnel, uh, a lead gen funnel. Yeah. That's, I, I always say everybody has to go through the years of suck before they get to the good, because if you don't do that, you're not going to learn anything. <laughs> exactly. I I've been through my share of those sucky clients before and oh my gosh, it's awful. But when you learn that lesson, you never repeat it again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sometimes you have to go through it yourself, unfortunately, yep. but sometimes you do. Yes. Yep. yes yeah. Yes. So back then when I started, um, at search engine optimization was mm -hmm. the thing yeah. and it was a lot easier back in those days. Uh, so it was about 10 years ago. It seems like a long time ago, but back then it was, you know, you could actually pay to like build links. And I mean, everything was just so much easier back then um, mm -hmm. to actually do marketing than it is today. And over time, what happened was I started to refine uh, what my specialty was. Mm -hmm. And I also started to refine what it is that I stood for. So starting your agency, you're not really sure what you do. And I, I actually took some time. I bought a book called Book Yourself Solid by Michael Port that really helped me kind of realign where I was mm -hmm. and it's you know you have to figure out what is it that you really stand for what is it that you're really doing and I realized that what I was trying to do was help fill the pipeline for my local business clients and I really wanted everything I did to bring ROI and I started to become known for that like I am the ROI person mm -hmm. um, and because of that I started to dive more into social media, like when Facebook came along and Pinterest and all these other ones, I started to realize that I had a knack for those and was able to systemize those, but also figure out ways to bring ROI in back then. And I think some people still do this now, but not as much back then. It was sort of like, just go with whatever's hot, right? Somebody would say, Hey, Facebook is a new thing. Everybody needs to do Facebook, not caring about ROI at all. <laughs> So I actually stood out more because again, from my legal background as well, I was used to caring for clients mm -hmm. and realizing, you know, I want to, I want what's best for the people I'm working with. Mm -hmm. So I started to say, Hey, you know what? It's great. We can do all this activity, but let's tie it into ROI. So again, I started to dive into more of that. I befriended somebody who was the uh, Google Analytics ambassador. I just, I started to dive into all that. How can you get more ROI out of this? And again, mm -hmm. that made me stand out from the crowd. And well, it was yeah, more attractive to people. delivering results where everybody else is just like, Oh, you're out there. You're seen, but not sure. Yeah. 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 There's a, I have a website. Yeah. Something happening after you're seen. <laughs> exactly. And that was just in the days when everybody was like, I want to get 10,000 fans on Facebook. Right. I'm yeah. sure you must have remembered seeing all those courses out there. And then finally people had a realization that that didn't make any sales for them. <laughs> so, yeah. so he might come in. Now what? <laughs> Exactly. So that really, again, that helps. So a couple of things I did is differentiating yourself in that way by figuring out what your mission is and what you're really, really, really good at. Mm -hmm. It helped my network to share what it is that I do instead of saying, she's a website person, which I really hated, but you know, <laughs> they start to figure out, Oh, okay. This is what she does. And here's how she can help you. Yeah. And then it also, um, again, helped spread word and got me speaking opportunities and things. Cause again, I'm bringing a different perspective to things. I like it. I like yeah. it. So what do you focus on now? Since you started at websites, did you eventually look for, realize, cause I know I went through this, you freaking hate building websites and you never oh, want to do another one. <laughs> you just said what was right in my mind. <laughs> I really, really don't like it at all. I don't like the whole design. I just don't like that at all. Oh. So I said, and you know, a friend of mine, actually, Chris has said to me, well, if you hate it so much, why are you doing it? I was yeah. like, that's a really good question. Um, so one of the pieces of wisdom that I've learned through the years of just building everything is 
do what you do really, really well and also what you love. So you have to kind of figure out what is it that you love to do and figure out a way to make money with it. That's mm -hmm. the key. Um, I love to knit. You can't make money. I can't make money knitting. So, <laughs> um, but I love to do social media. I love to do ads. I love to figure out the ROI on there. I just light up about that and it makes money. So yes. that's what I really focused on. And I really started doubling down on learning more about how to leverage Facebook advertising, like social media advertising. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, you know, organic is still very important. And we actually offer that as sort of like a supplementary service, mm -hmm. but people want results now. Most small businesses can't even afford to wait for organic to start to work for them. Mm -hmm. So really it's a matter of paid advertising in today's, uh, I think, uh, economy and just the way things are. And I saw that was actually happening more and more and more. So I, uh, again, I, I like to learn from the best of the best mm -hmm. and that's what I go after. And I try and meet those people. I take their courses, I get into their communities and I did do that. And, um, I started to become known for handling Facebook and Instagram ads and social media ads quite well and bring in ROI. And that's actually my bread and butter right now, but I do have supplementary services because I never want to put all my eggs into one basket. Yeah. I know some agencies do. Again, what do I stand for? I still stand for, I help fill your pipeline. I help bring you ROI. Yep. So I want to make sure that myself and my team can pivot that way. And what's great about today's world is that organic and paid all work together. Yes. So I make sure that the organic services that we provide have a lot of process behind them, have a lot of automation, are basically a lot of things that my team can actually handle. Mm -hmm. And I can focus on the very high level stuff where I'm working on some quite large um, paid advertising accounts. So it's a matter of just once you figure out what it is that you want to do and figure out how to stack your services, mm -hmm. then I think the next thing to figure out is where you should be spending most of your time. Like where do you add the most value? Yeah. Um, and then what can be automated, outsourced, et cetera, um, but still having kind of built in that QA. So your stand, you know, what you're delivering is still very high standard. Yes. So I love that. I love that being able to outsource and you focus on what you do best and let everybody else take care of the rest. So that's one thing that this past year that we've really focused on this year. So that's <laughs> why some things have changed around yeah. here. And it's but, scary. Okay. Yeah. It it's is very, very scary, scary to do as an agency owner. The yeah. very first hire I did was very, very scary. I will say that the first person I hired was I hired a personal assistant VA. Mm -hmm. And I also hired an in-person personal assistant to try it out, see how that would be. And I found that I was fine with a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. That was the very first hire I ever did. And it was extremely scary, but I would recommend that everybody at least try it. Even if it's somebody that helps you with your calendar, your email, pick something really small yeah. to start with. And then it's kind of like, once you start, you never want to go back. You know, yeah, so it's like you um, let go of just a little bit and then a little bit more and then, okay, you just take this and do it. <laughs> exactly. Best decision I ever, I ever made. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. So you talked about in the beginning, it was uh, local businesses and now you deal with millions of dollars in ad spend. So what did the, what did your client look like? How did it progress from local small business to what it is today? Sure. So I spent about five years, I think, really very involved with the small businesses. I'm in Toronto, Canada. I actually was working as a marketing consultant for Tabia, which is the Toronto Association of Business Improvement Areas, in which we were basically helping 40,000 you know, small businesses in Toronto. So I was like really involved there. And quite frankly, I just got tired of spending all of my days out on the road. So, you know, I love doing sales. I love doing in-person sales. I definitely do that. But after a while I realized, Hey, I can actually be 10 times more productive if I did everything online. At home. So <laughs> I actually, again, through networking, yeah. I started to get some more clients who were outside of Toronto, uh -huh. outside of the country, um, all over the place. And I really, really, really enjoyed that. So again, just this continual discovery of what is it I'm really, really good at. And that just lightens me up and energizes yeah. me. And that was it. And now, you know, if I go to see somebody, it has to be a very significant deal because I see that almost as a waste of time. If I have to spend an hour or two traveling, I'm like, oh, I could have done like a million other things, right? <laughs> Online with that. Mm -hmm. And I just really found that I was able to help a lot more people when I was, um, when I'm helping online business owners sell their info products. 
Gotcha. And it's just what I, what I love. I, I have a handful of small business um, clients still, but they're mostly friends and family and sort of like they're there as a favor type of thing. Gotcha. Um, but it's mainly online now. Yeah. So how are you finding nowadays? How are you finding these online clients? I mean, I know a lot of it's probably referral, but outside of referrals, how are you finding people to work with? Yeah. So, and I, again, because I actually used to do a lot of paid advertising to get leads into my pipeline. And I also used to pay companies actually book appointments for me. So I've gone through all of that. And, you know, if we want to do another session where we can talk about that, we definitely can. Um, and that worked for a while, but I do a lot of referral, uh, mainly referral work nowadays, mm -hmm. just because of everything that I've built up. But I also do a couple other things. Um, I very purposely come up with three communities that I spend most of my time in, meaning I network in there, I'm delivering value, and I actually choose paid communities. I used to do free, mm -hmm. um, but I'm very specific about choosing some, just three paid communities that I spend time in every single day. I just build up my authority inside of there. And I actually found that that has worked really well in terms of people seeing me as an authority figure. I just, I help out. I'm very helpful. As you know, I'll just dive in and just help people online. And I've gotten clients from that as well. They say, hey, you were so helpful. You seem to know what you're talking about. Let's talk a little bit more. I'd love to work with you type of thing. Um, and the other way I've done it as well is I've started to do more guest, um, guest interviews like this on podcasts. I mean, I have gotten clients from podcasts and they've told me which podcasts they heard me on and they were small podcasts, you know? And I thought, wow, I thought only like a thousand people heard, but the right people heard. Yes. So That's that cool. has been pretty cool. Um, I, so I'm actually, one of the things I'm going to be doing is have doing, being more intentional about that. I haven't been doing that as much as I should, I think. So I'm actually going to be doing that as uh, more as well. Well, and that's got to be a lot more fun going out and talking to people in communities and being on the podcast than it is, you know, putting everything else out there and hoping you get pe the right people in. So at least you're having fun with it this way. <laughs> yes, it definitely is. I mean, I can't, I think it's, I think in the beginning you have to put in the work. I would say that, you know, in the beginning doing all of that face to face, I think everybody should do that when they're starting out. Uh, it takes, it take, definitely takes longer when you're doing online things, mm -hmm. but because I've done things like, you know, I've done the cold calling. I've actually, you know, I've even, can't you even doing um like canvassing for a local charity going from door to door i've done that too so i know how to kind of go out there and push myself and do cold yeah. calling and cold emailing and you know you got to hustle and kind of do the in-person sales that helped me so much in terms of uh being able to close sales better online mm -hmm. so having that background definitely gave me a big leg up so I, I'm glad that I kind of went through that and I can kind of rest on my laurels a little bit there because I kind of put in the work to be able to you know do a lot more online because it, it's just harder it takes longer yes um, and it's just a bit it's just a bit harder as you know well. And then everybody that's watching this, this is not, you're listening to this. This is success does not happen overnight. You just don't wake up one day and all of a sudden be like, Oh, I'm going to be an internet marketer. And I'm going to be amazing at it. No, there took years and years and years of outside of the online space uh, to actually get to where you are. I'd love that because yeah. I've, uh, I've done all of those as well. The cold calling and the door to door and mm -hmm. so not fun, but it's you went fun. through it, you learned from it. You know, you never want to do that again, but you learn something. So you take it and apply it to the next thing. <laughs> exactly. You know, one of the things I think that maybe your listeners might find helpful, but even if you're just starting out is I learned about it in Michael Port's book. It's called the list of 90. So what you do is you just make a list and you don't make it bigger than 90 people. Okay. Make a list of people that you know that um, you need to, you feel like you need to keep in touch with for your business. So it's not like your mom and your cousins and stuff like that. Okay. It could be past clients, prospects you meet, et cetera, people, you know, and then what you do is every single day, because as you mentioned, success is, is it's built up of like consistent habits, right? All the time. Yes. Every, this takes like five, 10 minutes every day. Take the, the top three people off that list and send them something. Send the first person something um, that encourages them or maybe commiserates with them if something happened. Just send them an encouraging note. Mm -hmm. The second person, send them something of value. Like just say, hey, I, you know, whatever. Like I saw this article, I saw this video. I thought you might find it valuable. Here you go, check it out. Yeah. The third person, introduce them to somebody else in your network and just say, Hey, like I thought the two of you would get along because of this. Um, you know, I'll leave it to the two of you. 
the thing about that is you want to be seen as a connector. That's why you do that. And then the next day you take the next three people and you do that. And if you have a list of 90 after a whole month, you would have touched every person one time. Then the next month you do it again and you go to the top of your list, but you just um, mix it up a bit. You take the first three yeah. people yeah. and then keep sending them different messages. And that can really, really um, start a momentum for you. I've done that where, you know, my list was only 30 people even when I yeah. was just starting out. Yeah. I remember this one time I have somebody who said, Oh, Leanna, you know what? You just messaged me at the right time. I had forgotten about you. We need to have coffee. By the way, I'm ready for your services. Let's do it. I'm like, wow, this works. <laughs> All because you just went out there and did another touch. Not that you were trying to sell anything. You just want to say, hi, I'm still around. <laughs> exactly. And I'm just being nice to them, you know, just giving them something. And anybody can do this, no matter what stage you're at in your agency. And um, you just keep doing it every day. Like I said, it takes five, 10 minutes. Everybody has five or 10 minutes to do this. And you can really reap some rewards this way. And I would highly recommend everybody try this out. I love it. I love it. Because I, I can sit here, I'm like Chamber of Commerce president and people that were in Lions Club with me and different things. I can think of a billion people right now. That's amazing. That's a good, uh, yeah. very good hint. You guys, if you're listening, take that hint and do it. Because she's right. You never know how many people you'll get off of those. And they'll connect you. If you start connecting people, they're going to start connecting you with other people. So I love Exactly. That. You want to be seen as the hub. So people come to you and that's what I really have cultivated. And I continue to do that still. Mm -hmm. I like that. Actually, that made me think some, a few years ago, somebody called me and they're like, Hey, do you know what I any job openings? I'm like, no, that's a really weird question that you asked me. Well, you just know everybody you're connected to everybody in town. I there was like, go. Oh, Okay. Well, let me look and see what I can find you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you talk to some of my clients, they'll be like, yeah, I go to Leanna. Like mm -hmm. I have some clients where they just come to me first and because it and you know anything about it, but they see you as that person. They know I can either figure it out or I can connect them to somebody. Yes. I like it. I like it. So what does your pricing structure look like now? I know back in the day doing the websites, it's totally different than what it is now. Yes. But when you're running yeah. Facebook ads and things like that, what is, what does the pricing structure look like yeah. for your clients? So for all of the non-paid advertising things like organic, um, social media growth and blogging and things like that, it's on a retainer basis. So I figure it out on my costs ahead of time in terms of what to offer. And then I create packages for people based on what it is that they need. Um, for the paid advertising, it's a little bit different. So for paid advertising, I actually do what a lot of other paid ads people do is mm -hmm. I charge a percentage of the spend and then there's a minimum uh, there's a minimum amount that they have to pay. Gotcha. So I'm very upfront with that with the clients. And just as a hint, when I do it that way, I just have one proposal and it's always exactly the same. And all I have to do is just change out the dates and the names and I send it through HelloSign and it's very, very quick and easy. So you're not stuck creating proposals for like five hours, right? Yes. It's always exactly the same and it's worked really, really well. I haven't had any pushbacks on it. Um, when we get up to some very, very large budget spends, mm -hmm. then I negotiate just a flat rate because at some point a percentage doesn't make sense anymore, yeah. you know? Um, and that's fine. I'm really looking for long-term partners to work with. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just how I, I do. It. And I think, I think you'll find a lot of other people do it, but the key is make sure you have your minimum in place and yeah. you let people know what your minimum is and stick to it. Um, and you will find the clients who are willing to pay you for that. And it'll be so much easier on you in the, in the end. That's true. So do you pay for the ad spend or do they pay for the ad spend? Do they pay you oh. and you pay for it? I know there's two schools of thoughts there. there is, um, so I was I, curious what yours yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, um, I am actually somebody where they'll add me as a partner to their account and the clients are responsible for the ads budget. Okay. I've done it both ways. And for me, that works best for me, um, just in terms of how it makes me feel comfortable and how we kind of manage everything. Mm -hmm. One or it's not, nothing's wrong with, with either, either way. one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just find that much. That's the way that I prefer to work. I like it. So when you actually get a new client in, you've sold them, you've given them that one page proposal that you took two seconds to create. Mm -hmm. uh, what does your onboarding process look like once you get those people signed? They, they've signed the contract, they're ready to, or the proposal. Do you have contracts? Yes, I do. So a um, lawyer, that's a dumb question. Did I really just ask the lawyer if she has contracts? <laughs> well, you know, 
sometimes you have verbal contracts, which is okay. <laughs> um, I like to keep things very simple. So mm-hmm. I have a simple contract. Again, I just send it through hello sign mm-hmm. and it's all like kind of electronically signed there. And actually in the, in the proposal, I actually tell them what to expect. I say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take this week to set up. It's going to be another week to do this and then this, and then you're going to get these reports. So it's actually all inside of there. And I have to say, I do not have a very big onboarding process. I don't have this whole fancy thing. Um, I find that, at least for me and the people that I work with, um, they appreciate it when I'm closing the sale. I tell them what to expect. I say, this mm-hmm. is what you're going to get. You're going to get a report every Tuesday. Um, here, you know, here's the timeline of when things happen. Mm-hmm. And also, as soon as they finish signing, then I just send them, um, they get an email with everything that they have to provide. You know, mm-hmm. things like your branding guide, your access to this, whatever. And for example, giving me partner access to their Facebook account, I actually had created a video that I just put on Vimeo. I don't, I mean, there's no private information in there, so I don't really care. And so what I do is I link that in the email. I said, Hey, like, if you have trouble trying to figure out how to do that, here's a, here's a video, how to do this. Mm -hmm. And if I find that clients have trouble doing something, I actually create a video and I include it in that first email going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And that actually seems to get things going. And I also find that especially with very busy CEOs, they enjoy that. It makes you look good. It makes you look organized. Mm -hmm. Organization is very sexy, you know, and it gives them confidence in you. So again, I'm taking care of you. You're my client. I'm taking care of you. So I need to show that I have confidence and I need to show that I know where we're going right? You don't want to follow somebody and you don't know where you're headed, right? <laughs> you, you, want, you want to tell them, okay, this is where we're going. I'm not giving them the micro steps, uh-huh. but they know I'm in charge of this part. I'm doing this really well. And here's the map that I've set out. So they know where they're headed. CEOs love that, especially busy ones. Uh-huh. And, and then we just kind of go on from there. And it's a very smooth process that way. All right. I like it. I like it. So is there anything, I know 2020 is coming up or is going to be, or we are in 2020 by the time this airs, uh, (laughs) what does 2020 look like for your agency this year? Yeah. You know, it's been a really interesting year, especially the last couple months for people who do a lot of Facebook ads. Um, I think that there's a growing concern around people who have Facebook ads as their bread and butter, uh, that the bubble may be bursting soon. I don't know. I'm not saying that it is, (laughs) but one of the words that have been bandied about is diversity again. And one of the things that I've been doing and taking a look at in terms of how we're doing things is to diversify. So, I do do ads on Google and on YouTube and on Pinterest. And um, I even just started doing some more ads on LinkedIn. Um, But I never really led with that because Facebook ads was always a sexy thing. Mm -hmm. So again, as an agency owner, you need to pivot. And our main focus is still the same. We still want to deliver ROI, but now I'm actually saying, hey, let's actually try and diversify a little bit more. So I'm actually figuring out which ones I want to specialize in, in terms of diversifying Mm -hmm. and also taking a look at some of the side projects that we have where we're doing a lot of organic stuff Mm -hmm. and seeing if there's other opportunities there to be fat up, um, to help work together with, with the ads. So I think we'll be doing a lot more content repurposing and blogging, I think in 2020, just finding a little bit more of a balance, Yeah. Uh, you know, still focusing on paid media, of course, but I think just finding more of a balance so that not only ourselves, but we can help our clients kind of weather those storms, uh, especially on Facebook when they come about, you know, especially in the last quarter of the year. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, Liana, I have enjoyed every minute of talking to you. And if you See guys here. enjoyed this and you want more, uh, you can join our digital agency insiders for a two week trial where we actually have an in-depth interview with Liana talking about her tiger tools. So if you want that, uh, go to digitalagencyinsiders.com for more and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Yay. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that interview. Now, if you want to see more insider interviews of other agency owners, I want to invite you to join our Digital Agency Insiders Mastermind. Now, inside the mastermind, it's for entrepreneurs who are ready to build a six and seven figure per year agency and to be able to run it from a coffee shop. How incredible would that be? So inside of our mastermind, you'll get access to premium step-by-step training um, from Dr. Ben, as well as myself and some others about starting, building, and scaling your agency. 
Um, along that training, you're going to get behind the scenes looks at other successful agencies. You're going to get a weekly live call uh, with our team and then 24 hour access to our team as well as other members in that group. And we're going to give you a free we're going to give you a free uh, two week training. So if, to get into this, go to digitalagencyinsiders.com backslash mastermind. We'll see you guys next time. You've been listening to the Digital Agency Insiders podcast. For more tutorials on growing your digital marketing agency, make sure to visit digitalagencyinsiders.com.